So Bill Butler is part of our stewards team. And uh, if you're not familiar with the stewards team, it's kind of like a board of elders. That's what it is. And hey, wait, you're supposed to wait until I like said something cool. OK. <laughs> yeah, OK. And so <laughs> he's going to be making his way up. We have some updates that we kind of want to go a little bit deeper in there, um, deeper with you. And so now I'd like you to go ahead and welcome up Bill Butler. Thank you, Diva, as always. So yes, for those of you who I haven't met, my name is Bill, and I am on the uh, stewards board. Can I get out of the way here a little bit? No, I'm fine. That's, that's fine. So we're, as we're setting up uh, around me here, that's great. And you know, and I did turn 60 this year, so I think being an elder is, that actually works now. Uh, so, so anyway, I just wanted to give a quick update um, we have, there were some updated FAQs, I believe they're on uh, every other chair out there. Uh, for those of you who are online, uh, the FAQs were sent out as part of our weekly update email, and they're also posted on our social uh, media sites. So you can, you can take a look at those. But just, uh, just briefly, so the, the updated FAQs kind of gives where we are now with uh, our interim plan. Uh, the interim plan contains uh, six main elements, and so I'll just walk through those really quick. The first one is, you know, setting up our organizational and operational structure of the church in this time uh, with no lead pastor, and that includes actually naming uh, Ron Hunt as our interim lead. Um, so, I'll move back here to the middle now. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so another key element of that is actually sharing a vision for new life as we move into this next season. Ron talked about that actually the last couple of weeks, right? Uh, where we, are, we want to make sure that we're emphasizing the reason new life exists, which is to help people encounter Jesus by loving them the way that Jesus loves us all. And we do that through uh, the culture that Ron's been talking about of Everyone's loved, nobody's perfect, and anything's possible. And so we'll, we'll be emphasizing that through teaching series and through our volunteer ministries uh, over these, these coming weeks and months. Uh, another element is to build and equip a vibrant volunteer ministry. New Life has always been about uh, volunteer ministries, and that's how, that's how church happens. Um, here is through volunteers. So we just want to make sure that we have, that we recruit and support leaders for those ministries. And also the goal of filling all the open volunteer spots. So stay tuned uh, for um, a teaching series and a ministry fair that's coming in September. Uh, another critical element of the plan is then actually to support and care for the current staff and for all those volunteers. It's very important to us. Uh, and then, obviously, we'll be developing uh, a lead pastor search process and a search team, uh, you know, so that, that God will get us in touch with the, with the person that he's already, uh, he's already got out there and he already knows. Uh, want somebody who embodies the, uh, you know, the vision and mission and, and heartbeat of, of new life. And then finally, a regular and frequent communication because, you know, we're a family and we're all in this together and we all need to know what's going on. So those are the elements of, of the interim plan. Uh, frankly, I'm really excited about what God is calling us to in this next season um, to be able to point people to Jesus uh, here in Sonoma County, you know, by loving them and by loving each other. So as Ron would say, everybody on board with that? <laughs> okay. Uh, Diva mentioned uh, uh, the financial update and in the FAQs there's a little bit about that, but you know, just to highlight, we are, the, the summer months have been um, a particularly fiscally challenging for us. Uh, so we do have an immediate financial need. 
the summer months are typically a down, they're kind of a down giving, giving months because people are gone. Uh, but, you know, coming out of COVID and coming into the transition, you know, our reserves this time around aren't what they normally are to help us weather this, this period. So we would certainly um, appreciate your giving prayerful consideration to beginning to give uh, or to seeing what you can do to in increase your giving. As Ron talked about last week, we're all in this together, and that may mean, you know, serving in ways we haven't served before and, and also giving in ways we haven't given before. So thank you for all who are generously giving. As Diva said, your, your generosity is what makes everything we do happen here. So thank you for that. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm giving uh, this update. Um, so last week, uh, Pastor Ron and Gordon McGee were, they spent the week in Mexico mentoring uh, a pastor down there that our, our church supports. And uh, late this last week, while he was away, uh, Ron's wife Monica began experiencing uh, some increasing chest pain. And so she went into the hospital on Friday. And Ron and Gordon were in Mexico. Uh, so Monica went into the hospital. She ultimately was transported to Kaiser in San Francisco and they've been conducting some tests and actually found that she's had a series of small heart attacks. Um, so she is in care there. She's, she's resting uh, there comfortably, uh, but she will be undergoing surgery this next week uh, for that. So in the meantime, Ron's in Mexico, uh, tries to get home on, on Friday afternoon. Gordon can probably tell a little bit of the story here in a minute, but the border was closed for a while on Friday because of violence. Uh, so they were unable to get back Friday. Uh, they got back late last night. And so in the, in the middle of this yesterday morning, um, I spoke with Ron and Ron and the, the stewards team, we just called an audible and said, you know what, Ron, you need to be with your family uh, today instead of teaching us here. So that's where Ron is. Um, this morning, so we're going to pray for them uh, real quickly. But I, you know, I just want to say we have we Ron had already queued up this interview with this Mexico panel um, before he left. So obviously, this was not a surprise to God uh, that this was going to happen. We've got a couple of guest teachers that were already on the schedule the next couple of weeks. So once again, obviously, this wasn't a surprise uh, to God. And I would say this morning, as we're doing things a little bit differently, you know. God shows up. God showed up with every one of you when you walked in the door this morning. Um, God shows up in the stories, the stories that we're going to hear about the team that, that went to Mexico. Um, and God shows up in the prayers of his people. So, you know, whatever we do here, there doesn't necessarily have to be a sermon. There doesn't, we're doing church, and we're doing church as a family. And you're all my family, so I appreciate that. So... So I'm just going to take a minute and pray, um, pray for Ron and Monica and the church. Um, uh, Father God, we are so thankful that you show up, and especially in times that are unexpected, uh, that are challenging, uh, you show up. And Father, we are very thankful for that. God, this morning I, I want to especially pray for the Hunt family. Uh, first of all, for, for Monica, God, I just pray for, for healing for her, uh, for clarity uh, with the medical professionals on, on what's happening. And God, most of all, just for, for peace and um, a lack of fear that she, that she would have with what's happening. God, we just pray that you wrap, her, wrap your arms around her uh, this morning uh, so that she can feel you in a special way. And Lord, I just thank you for Ron and Monica who have so faithfully uh, served you and executed your mission here through New Life these past 20-odd uh, years, Lord. Thank you for their faithfulness. And God, I just thank you that we as a church uh, can now come around them and, and help support them. 
Father, we know that you are in control of this whole period, and we are so excited to see actually what you're going to do through us here in new life as we step forward. So, Father, we we just say thank you, uh, and I love you. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I will ask, uh, Gordon McGee is going to come up. He is going to lead the panel discussion that Ron was going to lead this morning. Gordon just got back late last night with Ron from Mexico. So Gordon, I will let you come up and introduce your team. Gordon McGee. Well, one of the beauties of not having Ron here is we've got a lot of time on our hands. <laughs> So I'm going to do a little, little bit more than just interview a panel discussion. But, you know, not being Ron, I've got to do what Bill did and get my notes out. <laughs> do I have glasses on? Yeah, we were um, finished everything we were going to do in Mexico anyway. We were just going to another, you know, a final dinner, which was kind of cool because they surprised Ron with a 71-year birthday cake. He's turning 71, you know, this week, actually. Um, but uh, I told him, Ron, let's just go, right? Let's not wait till tomorrow and get on a plane at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Let's go now and get you on a plane. So we finish dinner and we hop in a car and we go. We drive three hours. It's always a pleasant drive because you got this guy who knows so much. You got these conversations which are wonderful. But anyway, uh, three hours out, this phone starts pinging after we came out of the mountains and they're like, don't go into Ensenada. You know, there's too much violence and conflict. and all. So we had to drive all the way back. And uh, then there was a big to-do about whether we should leave on Saturday morning, but we just caravaned with the other YWAM teams, and we didn't see anything. Maybe they exhausted themselves the night before. The cartels had said that nobody's allowed to, to move or do anything until Sunday at 3 a.m., which would have been just a few hours ago. You know, they wanted some of their people out of prison, but it didn't turn out that way, so here we are. Here I am. Runs with Monica. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Um, but I heard him talking to Bill, you know, because as soon as we had to turn around and he knew he wasn't flying out, he's already been concerned about Monica. His next concern is, oh my gosh, who's going to talk at New Life tomorrow? You know, I had so much to say. I, was gonna, I said, Ron, we'll put you on Zoom. We'll put you on Zoom or, or Google Meet and, and they'll have you up there. He's all, oh, that would work. So, he was at peace, and we had a good night's sleep, right? Of course, that wasn't God's plan, but it, it gave him a break for a little while. Um, then I heard him talking to Bill, and he said, okay, 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 I won't be there. I'll go see Monica, and, but, you know, who's going to do the Mexico thing? And I'm driving, and right next to him, I just start hitting him. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, Mexico. Um, the, the team that went this year, they had a great time. I think they built two houses, but it started way back before that. And it started with, you know, who's interested in going? Who's God calling? Let's get the signups done and we need to raise some money. And I want to thank you, New Life. We, that was one of the most really great years of, of being able to raise the funds. We had the giving tree out there. The teams got to do all kinds of stuff. We're going to see a, a video and get to hear from some of the folks who went in just a moment, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being generous. You know, our southern neighbors, they're just people like us. They got to work. They, they want to raise their families. They need Jesus Christ, right? Often they're poor. They don't have a lot like we have. You know, we're the people at the party in this world. Even if we don't have a lot ourselves compared to other Americans, we're the people at the party, I got to tell you. And, you know, when we can give and be generous and, and change someone's life with a a house that, you know, quite comparably is like living in a your or my garage, but to them, it's a massive step up from that, you know, stick and cardboard thing they've been dwelling in with a dirt floor. You know, now you've got cement and a little kitchenette and bedrooms and we build them bunk beds and all this stuff. So it really changes people's lives, changes their, their level of the health in the family, takes a lot of stress and pressure. Um, these folks in San Quentin Valley, I'm going to throw up a map later, but they're basically picking food, most of them. And you get 12 to 15 bucks a day for picking Driscoll strawberry, uh, raspberries and, and blackberries. That's, that's what's going on down there right now. It used to be tomatoes. 15 bucks a day. If you work in construction, you can make 25 bucks a day. And we're talking about backbreaking work. 
Um, but the, the giving, the enablement, the prayers from all of you really came together this year. So it's a yearly trip. And just to give you a short history, um, I'll be 65 this year, but when I was 25, I went on a mission trip to Bolivia, got thrown out in a small town, preach every night, um, and I was hooked, you know. Long story short, I was hooked. That was it. You couldn't unhook me on missions. Well, Petra and I raised seven kids, and as they got into their teenage years, I said, they cannot grow up thinking that everybody lives like we do in Petaluma. So I went looking, I met this guy, Barry Weinroth from Youth with a Mission. He was running trips down every month to Mexico. So I made sure that all my seven teens went twice while they were growing up in my house. You didn't escape my house, but you went to the mission twice with dad. I think I went on seven to nine trips to do that. But at the same time, I didn't just take them. We organized groups, teenagers, adults, you know, within whatever church we were in. So we ran that for a long time going down to the orphanage. They didn't have house build. That entire valley is kind of like our valley. Here, we, here from Petaluma all the way up to Santa Rosa, we sit on the big Laguna de Santa Rosa watershed. And we have a lot of, you know, we can do a lot of agriculture here. Well, they have the same thing. They have a giant underground aquifer. They can do a lot of agriculture. When we first started going, it was little things like a small town, the orphanage, and then there were work camps where people had been bussed up from the bottom of Mexico with prom big promises and dumped off in remote camps where you got to buy your food and water from the company store and you don't make enough except for beans and tortillas and that's it and you back break labor all day. You know, you wonder why a lot of the men run off and go to America? That's why. Because they have no future at all. So those first 10 or 15 years, most of it was camps. But then these house building ministries started and slowly but surely the camps at this point are no more. There might be one or two really remote, but it's mostly people who have a small plot of land and they've built whatever uh, pallet and cardboard and tarp structure they can. And then they try to get on a list to get a house build. And it's not just YWAM, there's lots of ministries building these small houses. So that place has been transformed. It's, it's really wonderful to see. Um, but I made all my kids go twice, and then I came to New Life, and I took Ron for the first time he went down there. I think the Chattertons, anybody remember Joe and Lori Chatterton? They were on that trip. They fell in love with it, and they're like, we want to, you know, and I'm like, go. So for 20 years, I didn't, wasn't involved in it as the Chattertons did it, and now we have Matt Duffy and Jim Thornton and Jeff Eisenhower have been championing this for, in New Life for years now. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. yeah, so that's short history of how we got there. Um, and the team has put together, I believe um, Uriah Guilford has put together a video that we're going to watch right now that will help you see what was accomplished in this trip, with, enabled by your prayers and your gifts. What did we do in Mexico? So let's take that away.
hats off to the team. Yeah, and like they said at the end, come join us next year, you know. Um, how many people can go? Well, I was talking to Barry Weinroth. He said, oh, I just got back. I had 120 people. We built eight houses. I'm like, gee, you know. <laughs> there's room. There's room. Come with us next year. Um, so now we're going to interview some of those who went, because I love to hear stories from people who were actually there. You know, video is great. Some stories. Icing on the cake. So um, can I have April Diego, Dan McNamee, and Lucy Guilfort? Y'all here? All right. Let's see, we were gonna have a fourth, but we're not, so. I'm more comfortable standing than sitting. If you don't wanna sit, put your chair up there. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's better. Oh, you got, does that work? Check it out. Check. Hey, all right. Very good. All right. So good to see you all. Let's see. What's my first question? All right. Um, April, was this your first trip to San Quentin Valley? And what were your expectations when you first signed up? What were you hoping for? Um, yes, my first my first time going. Uh, this was a bucket list item of mine since I was, I guess maybe 11 or 12, because I used to go to um, the YWAM camps up in Chico, and so I knew about these missions trips, and um, I had always wanted to go, but the timing never aligned. So um, I didn't know my what my expectations were. Um, some people on the trip said, once you go once, you'll be hooked. And I thought, hmm, what, is that, what does that mean? So I, I think I just went a little, a little nervous, you know, kind of thinking, what are the sleeping arrangements? What, what are we going to be doing? You know, what's the day going to look like? So I think I, I went with a little anxiety of, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect, but um, an open heart to seeing what God had. All so, right. Yeah. Very good. Lucy, I know you've been at least twice, right? Yes, this was my second time. Okay, so. and what were you hoping? Yeah. What were, what were um, you expecting to have happen? I can agree that after you go one time, you are hooked. <laughs> um, I was definitely hooked after I went the first time. I was, I was so thrilled to go back um, and to do more work and to help. And I went with my father the first time, and I went with my dad and my sister the second time, so I got to do more and my expectation. Like, I knew it was going to happen, and I knew sleeping arrangements and all kinds of stuff, but it was just exciting to do more and get to help out more. So that was really cool. <laughs> all right, all right. Dan, was that your first trip? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, this was definitely my first trip down. And um, I think back uh, probably 10 years ago when I got my first invitation to go down. And probably for the next 10 years, I kept getting that invitation to go down and I kept finding a way to say no, I'm too busy, no, life's in the way, um, no, um, uh, I just found too many ways to say no, and finally, um, I was realizing that the people who were asking me weren't the people, it was, it was him up above who was asking me, and, uh, and I was saying uh, no, no to him. And so finally, when I did say yes, I was anxious, I was nervous, I didn't know what to expect, uh, but I said yes. And uh, when I got there, um, yeah, the sleeping, what was it going to be like, what was, you know, I, I had no idea. Um, but I do know that I was being called to serve. And uh, when I got down there uh, with, with the team, almost 40 of us were there. And half of them were uh, our teenage kids who went down with us. And I was just like, um, I could have served so many years before this if I had just listened to uh, the calling that God had for me before that. So, um, yeah, will I go back as long as I can, as long as I'm healthy to be able to do that. So, uh, and just so blessed with the team that went. Uh, and that uh, 
that we're so blessed to be with YWAM and, and to have done this for so many years. Yeah, thanks, Dan. April, let's come back to you. Um, so please share with us one thing which surprised you or took you by surprise during this trip. Um, I had no idea how bad the living conditions were for the people. Um, the, the build that I was assigned to was a single mother. Um, she had three children, an infant, a six-year-old, and I think a 12-year-old. And she basically lived in a building that was made of uh, pallets that were covered in cardboard and like some bisqueen and uh, no running water, no electricity. Um, just a dirt floor. I mean, no safety to be able to lock the door at night and say, you know, I'm a single mom because I, I am one myself and I live alone and I have my kids. And um, to not be able to lock the door and know that like you're, you're safe for the evening, you mm -hmm. know, to know mm -hmm. that at any point in time somebody could just barge in. And so I think that that just really took me back to, to think like these people have so little um, but then, you know, when we showed up and, you know, as everything was getting laid out, it was like they couldn't wait to jump in and take part in building their home. There was just so much pride and love and joy in their eyes to be able to pick up a hammer. And, you know, the mom had the baby strapped to her and she's got the little girls running around and putting her hands in the paint and coming and putting it on our pants. And, you know, it was just, <laughs> it was, it was really, there was nothing I expected about the, the trip to turn out the way that it did. It was That's so, cool. so much better than I expected. Huh. Lucy, you know, you've been there before, but was there something that took you by surprise or, or surprised you during this particular trip? Yeah, something that definitely surprised me was like, because last year there was like, a, I think about 20 of us who went, and we were able to build one house, which is just incredible. Just And then, like, I remember we played the video last year, um, and like other people talked and there was so, I could see so many people's faces lighting up. Like I wanna go and I wanna, uh. I'm thinking about it. And then like showing up and seeing the amount of people almost double and like we're able to build two houses now and like other like little projects. It's just amazing to like show up and to see and to see that and to see how many people wanna help and like wanna come and like, it's just really amazing to witness and to be able to work with all those people and like meet new people from the church that I've never met before and like just be able to do all that stuff. So it was really, it was kind of surprising, but it was, it was just really beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think same, but I kind of echo what April said is, you know, we got there at the first house build and um, single mom with three little kids. And so just imagine a structure that's 10 foot by 12 foot uh, with a dirt floor. Uh, made out of pallets wrapped in plastic, uh, but basically um, a family of four living in this tiny little shelter on Monday when we got there. And then uh, through the team, um, when we left on Thursday afternoon, being able to hand over the keys and dedicate the house to the family. Uh, uh, basically a, a, a small house, three bedrooms, with a kitchen, with we put up solar panels, so during the winter months they had lights inside the house now. Um, yeah, it was just uh, just such a blessing to be a part of that and, and to see um, what an impact that we could have uh, as us as a team and as us as a church community because it was really, you know, all of you who supported us and supported this mission. Um, and uh, yeah, just to be a part of that and, and to see how we could change the lives so dramatic, dr dramatically of this one family. Um, I was also working with Eric uh, and, and uh, Dan on um, a schoolhouse that Luis, you saw some pictures of Pastor Luis up there. Um, so not only were we building the homes, we're helping build a church and we're partnering with the church. And then we're also building a schoolhouse. So it's such a poor, poor, um, area of uh, the Baja down there that a lot of the kids can't afford to go to the school. And so Luis and his wife, who just passed her master's degree, I believe, and got her teaching credentials, Gordon, if I'm right there. Bachelors um, of Science in, uh, Bachelors in Educational Science. Yeah. yeah, so now she'll be able to take in these young uh, students uh, in the area who can't afford the regular school to bring them in and teach them and, and show them the love of Christ that they walk every single day. Yeah.
great. Back to April. Last question for y'all. Um, how has this trip impacted you personally? Has your perspective or other aspect of your life changed? Um, I don't know how it couldn't impact anybody personally. I, I really uh, wish that every American could experience um, a week in Mexico, I think, especially looking at the state that the world is in right now and the turmoil, um, it just really put things in perspective for me to go, okay, you know, there's, this is a real situation. These people have nothing and they need everything. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it got me hooked. Um, I definitely <laughs> will be back uh, and definitely will be taking my teens uh, with me hopefully next year because I would like them to experience that. So yeah, no, it's, it's, cool. it's, I highly recommend it to anybody and everyone if you are able to. All right, Lucy, um, same thing. Has your perspective or other aspect of your life changed that, because you've gone to these trips in Mexico? Last year, I mean, it was my first time, so it was, you know, pretty shocking. I was, I was 15. Like, I had, I had no idea what I was walking into. Um, I've seen this church, you know, do this many times, and I was so excited to finally, like, be a part of it. Um, but to see the state that these people are living in and what they had and what they didn't have compared to what I had was, like, I felt so blessed that what I had, I could help give them more and to just be there for them. And on those days, to just be there for them and it really impacted my mindset of just like <laughs> living honestly I mean like April said how does it not affect you like you know you're seeing a whole new world compared to what I mean I've grow grown up in and it just it's shocking but then this time I went and I had a different mindset of like how can I help more besides this one week a year that I am blessed to like have the resources from my parents and the church like for this one week a year what else can I do how, how else can I serve how else can I help other people so mm -hmm. it really just gave me a new perspective from like, I'm so blessed. So it just, it just kind of opened my mind more, I think, to sum it up. Cool, thank you. I think same for me too, is just uh, coming home from that and, and witnessing. You saw it at 15, I didn't see it till 65. And so it was, uh, yeah, it, it was life changing. And um, I can only um, continue to, share with all of you who've asked me, you know, how was your trip? What was it like? Will you go back? And, and um, I will continue to share that story to anyone who asks. And, and just, again, I can only say a heartfelt thank you to this church community who supported all of us, um, who went down and supported the families and, and is continue to support the church. And to Gordon, who is down mentoring uh, Pastor Luis and, and developing that church um, in the same guy that, you know, we just want to bring the church to people who want to know Jesus and, and to bring that to them. So thank you to Gordon uh, for all you do down, down there as well. So, um, yeah, for me, it, it's, you know, I got back home and, uh, and it's just, it, it brought a new sense of gratitude to everything that God has gifted me and my family um, and that God has gifted me in this church community that I have in front of me today. So thank all of you for what you do every day. Awesome, thank you, Dan. Um, so, um, any of these folks could ask any of the three of you any question they want about Mexico, right? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. If, if you have any curiosity <laughs> about uh, this upcoming trip, trip next year, uh, Jim, what month are we going next year? Middle of June. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because Jim likes to be surrounded by kids who aren't, have nothing to do. <laughs> well, great, thanks. Thanks for coming up. So I had just a few pictures to share from this last week when Ron and I went down and just a couple things to say about them. Um, can we put those up? I gave them to Joe at the beginning of church. Ah, okay, there's the first one. I'll let you know when to change it. I just, to give you guys an idea of where this is, this is uh, the San Quentin Valley. Um, the town is Vicente Guerrero, but the whole valley, we work in the whole valley, not just the town. Uh, it's about 200 miles south of San Diego, so it take you about five hours to bump on down there in 17 passenger vans. And uh, the roads are good. When, I, you know, when we first started going after uh, 
Ensenada, it was all bets were off. Burning trucks, dead horses, crosses everywhere in filth and garbage and dirt, you know, potholes. We were familiar with those. Now the roads are beautiful all the way through. It's like, wow, big change in 30 years. Um, but, um, and we, <laughs> we ran into some people that we partnered with eight years ago. They were down there this week. The same guys and and we we're like, oh you guys helped us build that house eight years ago because eight years ago new life built this house you can go to the next slide um, so about eight years ago new life built a house for this family and they were living and they uh, he told me they lived a couple months when they first got there in one of those really <laughs> squalid hovels but new life and another church partnered together built them a house it was funny we bumped into those guys this week jim they're like hey we built, help build this house oh yeah um but it wasn't just another house built because uh, uh jeff Weisenhauer and jim thornton and matt duffy made and joe chatterton made friends with this guy and he's he was a young younger pastor at the time jose luis uh, hernandez uh, he has a, a long history that I won't go into, but he ended up in Mexico, and he has a lot of vision, a lot of vision, a lot of things that he wanted to do. And every time New Life came down thereafter to build houses, they partnered with Luis during those builds. He translated for them, helped things get along, stuff like that. Um, and they've been good friends with them, and, and I hadn't been there in 20 years. Ron and I went 20 years ago, and he and I got, you know, sort of, off into our India mission connections, which is a different story, and because the Mexico thing was in such capable hands with the Chattertons and with these guys. Uh, but they kept telling me, oh, you know, Pastor Luis, you got to meet Pastor Luis. So finally, getting around to it, last year I went on a house build and I met Luis, and, and we clicked together really well. It, you know, it was um, love at first sight. <laughs> but um, we got along really well, and he has a lot of vision. He had a lot of projects going, and I started thinking about him, and when I came back, I was praying, and the Lord said, offer to help him. Offer to help him. Offer to come alongside of him. I mean, I'm newly retired. What am I going to do with all those corporate project management and, and you know, resource management skills? So um, I found so many connection points with him, his story, my story, what the Lord is doing in and through his family. Um, I started talking to people about him before I went to offer to help him. What's Luis like? Oh, he's the greatest guy in everything, but he has too many things going on at once. He's never complete them all. His vision's too big, right? So I went to Luis and I said, hey, look, um, what if we work together and I will help you to learn some basic project management skills, you know, but one thing is you got to figure out what your focus is. Well, he and Irma, his wife, really did have a good solid focus. It's just that he was trying to do too many other side things at once. So we've been able to pull it back and uh, do some project management mentoring and start to get set up for some real fundraisers, which are not necessarily new life focused fundraisers. They have people that love them in Canada and all over the U.S. Um, and those, you know, initial requests are going to go out to people who, who know him personally. So I'm not going to bring those fundraisers to New Life right away. So this is, this is a picture of the Every Kid's Hope property. Think, think about that and how it looks in Every Kid's Hope. But how many of you remember what this building looked like when we first walked into it? Okay, it's just a bit of a different scale. But they have actually been running Every Kid's Hope, he and Irma, for quite some time now. And they were running it in the Red House, which is another mission build house for quite a while. And then as they started to add the bathrooms and that got complicated, they started doing it over at their house. So they've kept a continuity with Every Kid's Hope, which is a basic ministry. You know, a lot of countries that are, you know, we would call developing, there's one thing that they do, and I think they do it on purpose. If you're too poor to buy uniforms and books, you can't go to school. Why? Well, because they need field workers. Long story short, they need field workers. So, but you can't just buy a kid uniforms and make sure they have books and hope they go to school. If that family doesn't have food security, that kid ain't going to school. It doesn't matter what you buy them. Those parents are going to have to get that kid to work or beg or something because everyone has to eat. It's kind of a fundamental. So 
uniforms, school supplies, food security for the family, and then you got to get to know those families and find out what's going on. I mean, you really want to address any issues of violence in the family. Uh, you know, a lot of times mom and dad go off to work. They leave the kids with the uncle. Okay, let's not let our imagination go too far, but Luis and Irma have had to step in. They've even had to bring lawyers and step in and stop some of that kind of stuff. So that's every kid's hope in a nutshell, as it exists now. And then on top of that, Irma does an after-school program to help the kids that are part of the program catch up and, and you know, get an edge because they've usually been a little bit behind. Uh, but that's the property, and that's just a, that's just a front shot of it. Um, recently, you know, our team helped get the roof back up to where it needed to be. And the reason it had to be raised because of the building of the bathrooms, boys and girls in special needs bathrooms, they're almost done. Um, eventually there will be some apartments over the top and the playground and other classrooms, but that's going to be a phased project. So let's go to, okay, this, is, this one is La Puerta del Cielo Mission Church, the Gateway of Heaven Mission Church. Um, now when we were there last year in June, there wasn't nothing on this property. When we were there in January, church was being held in that tent over there to the right hand side. And uh, we were helping to build the foundation. And now some of the walls have started to go up. Well, phase one of the project is going to be to complete this downstairs, get in the windows, the doors, the whole bit, so that the congregation has somewhere to go out of the rain. Um, there's a lot of things that that congregation, poor as they are, can do. They can learn to tithe and give and support their pastor. They can save money for some chairs and things like that. But there's a lot of things they can't do by themselves. And that's where folks who God has gifted with uh, time, talent, and treasure come in. Anyway, I'm hoping to get that first story built by the end of this year, maybe. Um, but there was a big interruption. So when we were there in June, he was showing us Esther's leg, his 10-year-old daughter Esther, and um, Dave Ross and Dave and Debbie used to be part of this church. They've been like parents to that family along with the Chattertons, but Debbie being a nurse, they looked at that and they're like, uh-uh, Luis, that's gotta get checked, right? Turns out it was cancerous. Really large patch in the back of her leg. So um, Esther has been through all of her surgeries since February, all of her surgeries, all of her radiation, and uh, this was her when we went down, we went to her last appointment, she got to ring the bell. Last, last appointment, now recovery. Yes. So that was kind of an interruption. God, God had a purpose for that, and we won't get into all that today, but, um, you know, praise God, people who love them came around. I, I've never done a fundraiser like that. I probably had the money in less than a week to cover all that, and it wasn't, it wasn't inexpensive. Um, the other event we got to witness was Irma getting her teaching credential down there this week. And that was really cool, too. Um, now she's a credentialed teacher. She could actually start working in the system, maybe make a little income for the family, um, and at the same time be more qualified to operate every kid's hope. Um, so back to um, mentoring this man and project management. I'm smart enough to know when I don't know something. And when I'm pa uh, mentoring a guy like this, I don't know how to mentor him as a pastor. So I'm like, this guy needs a, a, a seasoned senior pastor who is familiar with planting churches to go, come alongside of him and help him with things that I have no idea how to work those problems out. Uh, so I grabbed my old friend, Ron Hunt. I said, well, we went to Mexico 20 years ago. Come on. So he set this last week aside, which was great. And uh, God handled the timing of what happened with Monica so he could actually focus on everything that we needed to do before he found out. And these two just really connected. It was great to see. And Luis got so much help from Ron, and they're going to start a regular, probably a once a month Zoom. I'm on with them a couple times a month. So that's what we did this week, and I want to thank you guys once again, New Life, for supporting Mexico trips all these years, more than 20 years. Um, and by all means, come to Mexico next year. Jim, could you come up here? This is our... This is our Impact Team Mexico champion, Jim Thornton.
And I'd just like to get Jim to close us out with a prayer for the whole thing. Working? <laughs> Before I do the prayer, I hope you're realizing the ripple effect of what we do down there. There are things that haven't even been mentioned that we've taught. There's Dorothy's Rest, which is an abused women's shelter that we got to meet her, gosh, five or six years ago. And um, the ministry she does is so important. The abuse level of women is so high. And the, obviously the children that are impacted. So we support her. Uh, and we see Luis and Irma with the small children. That is no small task. And it is absolutely wonderful to be part of that and support all the ministries that we can while we're down there. So every dollar you give affects a whole community. It's not just their family or the church that he's starting. While we're building, when we were down there in January, we were just at ground level, start pouring the foundation. But at night when we were done, we were handing out bags of rice and beans and tortillas for the families in the community so that they knew that what was being built right by them was a safe place to go. And it's a tremendous effort. Thank you, Gordon, for your skill set that brought Luis up to this level with Having you fun. Ron. Having fun. And it is fun. It is fun. <clears throat> so, dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity we've been presented to love and serve. Yes, we have great needs in our own backyards, but to go outside of the country, not knowing the language, feeling insecure with what little they have, and to see those people share so generously with us. We bring what we can, and they use what they can, and somehow your children and your communities are fed. So we thank you for this opportunity. We hope for many years that we can support and serve and realize the blessings that we get because of that. So proud to be a part of New Life. So Lord, we listen for your direction and guidance. We ask for protection over this community in San Quentin, and we're just grateful. So Lord, not only look over Ron and Monica as they recover, but certainly, thank you for this church that supports so many people in so many ways and are so generous with what we've been blessed with. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you. In your loving name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.